Aloha everyone, it's Antonio with hypnosisproductreviews.com. Today I've got a very special guest on, uh, Roy Hunter. The last time I interviewed him was probably about three years ago with the Hawaii Hypnosis Podcast. We're gonna inter- I'm going to interview him about his upcoming post and pre-conference at HypnoThoughts Live. And of course, since I'm in Hawaii, I had to find my most obnoxious Hawaii shirt. This is actually my work shirt. It's got to be the most obnoxious shirt in all of the Hawaiian islands. Oh, I like it. <laughs> well, it, it, how you doing, Roy? It's okay if I'm if I'm not standing in the sun, but if I'm in the sun, it's just ungodly bright. It's just it's it just blisters your eyes. <laughs> so, how you doing today? I'm doing fine, thank you. Got back uh, a few days ago from a very successful trip to uh, England, where I was able to teach three different workshops. You know, who, uh, who put those on? So I, I, I know a lot of people in England, like um, uh, Carl Smith and whatnot, have been putting a lot of workshops on. Uh, once every summer, uh, Pete Bateman and Lorraine Gleason of Hampshire Hypnotherapy uh, sponsor me to come to uh, Portsmouth and teach parts therapy. That's awesome. You know, one book I still need to get of yours is the, uh, you're probably going to have it at the conferences. I think it's the Art of Hypnotherapy. You've got, is it one or two books? Uh, I actually have six books now uh, that are in print. Well, I need to keep up with the times. Well, uh, you are going to be at Hypnothoughts Live. Is that correct? Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Stop by my booth. I'll have uh, some books available. And, of course, the autographs free. Okay, perfect. Autographs are always good. <laughs> You know, it's funny, speaking of autographs, when, uh, on an off note, when people are walking by my, uh, by my activity booth where I work, a lot of times people are walking by with, uh, with cameras. I'm like, no autographs, no autographs. And they kind of look at me like, oh, that's kind of weird. But I do it just to kind of lighten the mood up, get, get some good laughs. Yeah, so the uh, conference, I am, this is the third year. I've been every year. I think I met you, yeah, I met you the first year, talked for a couple bit, a little bit. I saw you last year. I think we were both kind of in passing, really busy. How would you describe HypnoThoughts to people? It's a group of people interested in hypnosis, both professionals as well as people who are not hypnosis professionals, but who are very interested in hypnotherapy, either as a possible future career or uh, to become a client of hypnosis, and they want to learn all they can before they choose uh, the hypnosis professional to uh, work with them. Definitely, and it, this I've been to two. I would say I've been to only one conference, being Hypno Thoughts Live, and I've been to a couple different trainings. One with Kevin Cole, one with uh, Igor Ladohovsky. The thing I love about Hypno Thoughts is it's got a, a big family feel to it because a lot of us have been in communication for years never met each other and being able, it's kind of weird being able to meet somebody when you don't have a keyboard. I remember the first time I met uh, Richard Nygaard, he had come out on vacation to Kauai, I think two or three years ago. And it was, we were sitting down eating dinner at a restaurant. So we both looked at each other. I go, this is weird. There's no keyboard to kind of talk to each other. (laughs) I like HypnoThoughts live conference because, uh, Unlike the other hypnosis conventions, with the sole exception of the Midwest convention, uh, it's not any one exclusive hypnosis association. Uh, It's a conglomerate with uh, people from all the various hypnosis associations that come. And I'm sure there are people there who use hypnosis who don't belong to any association. Uh, But basically, uh, it's a bunch of us with a common goal and that's to use hypnosis to help people yeah that, that's the thing it's um i'm definitely gonna want to uh check out different uh conferences so i know <laughs> a couple years ago uh i've heard scott say this i mentioned this a couple times and maybe on my podcast also on hypno thoughts the main website that if you want training he's like you want to get all kinds of training you want even if you're not gonna be a stage hypnotist be a stage hypnotist that way you can you can have kind of a well-rounded um, education. And so I think it would be good to check out everything and try to 
and I know some places can have high ego, so you just have to kind of brush those brush those off the bat. Well, I am not a stage hypnotist, uh, but years ago I took a stage hypnosis workshop uh, facilitated by Orman McGill. Uh, he and I were good friends, and he wanted me to learn stage hypnosis. And although I have attempted a small handful of stage hypnosis shows uh, from more of an educational standpoint for the audience, uh, I feel like a total novice at stage hypnosis, so I leave that to the pros who are masters at it uh, because it's not my cup of tea. But I feel that it was good that I tried my hand at it a couple times. Yeah, it seems like it would be good to give you that, uh, like I said, to kind of round out the education. You know, it's funny you mentioned Orman McGill. I was actually at a stage hypnosis show here, I think, God, it might have been four years now, or God, even five years ago. It was one of his students, the older guy, I can't remember his name. It was like, do uh, you know of anybody? I think his name was Scandini. Uh, doesn't ring a bell, although I have met thousands of hypnotherapists over the years and I can't begin to remember all of them. Yeah, it's, I have a bad memory <laughs> as is. And so your, uh, your conference, I know you've got two conferences. You have a pre-conference and you have a post-conference coming up. Can you uh, describe the classes and what people can expect to gain from them? Certainly. Uh, the pre-conference is on client-centered parts therapy. Uh, it's not the only game in town, but it's based on the concept that uh, we all have different uh, parts of our personality or aspects of the subconscious. Uh, for example, if a client wants to quit smoking, there's a part of that client's subconscious that motivated him or her to invest time and money to see me for sessions. But there's another part that is motivating the client to keep on smoking. Otherwise, they wouldn't need my services in the first place. And I act like a mediator and call out the two parts in conflict and help them come up with uh, their own uh, best resolution. So I'm helping the client to facilitate inner dialogue. Uh, Charles Tebbets was a pioneer of client-centered uh, format of parts therapy. And before he passed on in 1992, he asked me to continue his work. So I've revised it and updated it over the years. Uh, I wrote a book on it that was published in 2005 by Crown House Publishing entitled uh, Hypnosis for Inner Conflict Resolution, Introducing Parts Therapy. There are other variations of it, such as ego state therapy, which was pioneered by the late John and Helen uh, Watkins, uh, both of whom were uh, uh, doctors. And uh, Gordon Emerson is their protege. He uh, continued ego state therapy had a book by that title published in 03 by Crown House Publishing. And he went on to evolve it into what he now calls resource therapy. Um, Hal and Sidra Stone, who uh, were the pioneers of voice dialogue, uh, came up with their own variation, uh, which doesn't involve uh, the combination of deep hypnotic trance like parts therapy and ego state therapy do. Uh, then uh, there's another variation, which today is a six-step reframe, uh, which actually is a descendant of uh, the parts party that uh, Virginia Satir promoted many years ago. And then uh, she met uh, one of the two NLP gurus, and then uh, Bandler and Grinder evolved it into uh, another variation of parts therapy, which then evolved into the six step reframe. Then there's a professor of psychiatry at the University of San Diego who uh, started <coughs> a variation 40 years ago, which he called subliminal therapy, uh, where he would call out a higher uh, intelligent, wise part that he would call centrum and then he would have centrum arbitrate with the uh, patient's various parts, and he documented some profound successes with it. He now calls it uh, by a different name, but nonetheless, his version was so effective that uh, many months ago, after he got diagnosed with uh, Alzheimer's, he had a psychologist from Germany, who was one of his former uh, subliminal therapy students, do the technique on him, and he completely reversed the uh, symptoms of Alzheimer's. 
which is an amazing medical breakthrough. And I, uh, I was so moved by it when uh, Dr. Yeager sent me an email about his success that I literally was in tears of joy when I finished reading that email. It reminded me of uh, the seven years I worked part-time for Franciscan Hospice and how frustrating it was when I saw people who were very intelligent uh, suffering from Alzheimer's. And uh, that really sometimes challenged my uh, feelings to the outer limits. I sometimes would cry half the way home after I would go see a patient with Alzheimer's uh, when I worked for the hospice. Yeah, that seems like it could be really emotion, uh, emotionally and uh, mentally draining. I learned a lot. I wouldn't trade the education, but I certainly have a lot of respect for people who work with the death and dying. Uh, I'm glad I did my time, so to speak, uh, doing hypnotherapy for the Franciscan Hospice. But uh, I much prefer traveling uh, and teaching. And I've had the privilege of teaching parts therapy uh, and or regression therapy in 17 different countries in the last six years. That's a that's a good accomplishment right there. It's a great way to help clients resolve inner conflicts. And I've helped many clients over the years uh, who have tried and failed at other hypnotherapy techniques that work for most of the people most of the time. Uh, so parts therapy is a terrific tool. And I believe every practicing hypnotherapist should have either parts therapy or one of its variations in his or her toolkit. That's Man, my that personal opinion. Now doing this uh, this podcast, I wish I had more time in Vegas because it's been a year since I had a vacation, so I have to make it part vacation. It's, it, when you live on an island, you need to get off the island because you will go absolutely crazy. You need to be able to, to see uh, shopping malls, kind of city life. So I, I think for next year, I'm, I'm expecting you might be doing the, another workshop. I'm definitely going to have to make it to it. Well, if you can take a break for a few hours – rent a car and drive out to Hoover Dam, which is only about an hour from the Strip. And uh, as the park rangers say, they can give you the whole damn tour. <laughs> yeah, I think I might, I might have to do that. <laughs> it's uh, very definitely worth seeing. Uh, there's also an awesome view of Hoover Dam from uh, a bridge that was opened up just a few years ago. Uh, so that's also uh, worth seeing, and it's near the Hoover Dam. Now that that bridge is it the one, or is it the one at the canyon with the 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 clear bridge that kind of wraps around? Or I don't know if they even completed that one. It's completed. If it's the one uh, that uh, I believe you're thinking of, that is much higher up than the elevation of Hoover Dam. So I know uh, there's, there's one. one. I'm sorry for interrupting. There's one that's supposed to be clear when you look down. It's supposed to be a clear glass going all the way down. Uh, you can actually walk out on the bridge and look through uh, glass. Um, when you drive across it in a vehicle, uh, the fence post is so high that you can't really see the dam from the vehicle. But you can go on the side road <coughs> excuse me, and park and walk out on the bridge. And the view is incredible. That, you're that looking at Hoover good. Dam almost as though uh, you're looking at it from an airplane. See, I would never get my girlfriend on that. <laughs> well, if uh, she prefers canyons, there's a beautiful Red Rock Canyon uh, on the west side of Las Vegas. Uh, you can do that in just uh, an hour or two. Yeah, I think I might I might post something in Hypno Thoughts to see if people want to. Yeah, if anybody listening to this, if you guys want to, I'll do like a trip out there, if, uh, if you guys have a car, I'll pay for gas, and that way we can try to see some beautiful nature bits. Now, the so the first one is uh, parts. I took a note. So the first one, you're doing parts, and that's is it a, a two-day class or one day? It's a two-day class. I take you through the entire process step-by-step step, uh, to help you get results. Uh, there's a process that uh, I have evolved over a period of three decades plus, and it's past the test of time. Uh, it may not be the only game in town because there are different ways to get from uh, Los Angeles to New York, but it is a tried and proven method that works and gets results. Uh, Dr. Bruce Eimer, who's a licensed clinical psychologist, 
working as a pain psychologist uh, as a full-time job in a major hospital in the Philadelphia area, uh, has been using parts therapy with chronic pain patients with uh, some amazing results. He studied ego state therapy years ago directly under uh, John and Helen Watkins, and he told me he prefers the parts therapy process because it's easier to learn, easier to apply. And uh, after he and I met, we uh, became friends, found out we had some common professional goals. So we got my parts therapy workshop approved by the American Psychological Association for uh, CE credits for uh, licensed psychologists. Uh, Dr. Eimer and uh, the Behavioral Therapy Center is uh, responsible for the credits and the content of the workshop. So I have to state that in any advertisement of whether it's uh, verbal or uh, public. But nonetheless, uh, it's proven to be worthwhile as passed the test of time. And to the best of my knowledge, um, I believe I'm the, uh, if not the first, one of a handful of people who are not licensed psychologists who's had a program approved by the APA for uh, continuing education. Uh, then Pulse Conference, Dr. Eimer and I are both co-presenting uh, Hypnotic Regression Therapy, which is based on the book that the two of us co-authored entitled uh, The Art of Hypnotic Regression Therapy, A Clinical Guide. That was published in 2012 by Crown House Publishing and has received very high reviews from all over the globe. We wrote that as uh, a response to the regression critics who seem to want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. Uh, their concerns are valid because uh, people don't understand the difference between uh, guiding and leading and don't uh, understand what inappropriate leading is or the risks of false memories. Also, if they don't understand how to handle abreactions, these are the emotional discharges that take place during uh, regression therapy, then uh, they are wise not to use regression. But that being said, if a person is competently trained in uh, hypnotic regression therapy, uh, it's a very valuable tool that can help some of the people some of the time. Uh, I am not one of these who tries to use regression with everybody, nor do I try to use parts therapy with everybody. I believe in fitting the technique to the client instead of vice versa. So. Uh, while I'm doing parts therapy, Dr. Eimer is presenting uh, two-day pain management, which is also approved by the APA for CE credits. And then the two of us are combining our own experience to co-present the two-day regression therapy workshop after the conference. Oh, this sounds good. Yeah, everybody listening to this, if you, uh, more than likely, I won't have time to put this on my, most of the podcasts I put on my website. If you look above this link, I'll have a <laughs> I'm sorry, above this video, I have a link to the uh, to the uh, uh, HypnoThoughts Live where you can actually register for um, either one of his, con or his conferences or register for both of them. Great. Thank you. Uh, I might add, you do not have to be a psychologist to attend these workshops. I just felt that it would uh, be important for the credibility of the workshops to note that the APA has approved both of them. Uh, including, well, three of them, if you include Bruce's pain management uh, workshop for uh, CE credits for psychologists. That, that's a, that's, I think it shows a, like a, a changing in the tide where hypnotherapy is starting to become a lot more mainstream considering the APA yeah. is giving you a CE, is it CEU credits? Well, Dr. Eimer was uh, recommending the art of hypnosis and the art of hypnotherapy uh, to uh, psychologists and physicians that he was mentoring in hypnosis for quite a number of years because he's an approved hypnosis mentor and fellow of ASCH, which is the American Society of Clinical Hypnosis. And eventually he decided he wanted to meet the author of the books he'd been recommending. So he showed up at one of my parts therapy workshops in 2011 and we hit it off uh, great as colleagues and eventually became friends. And we both invested many hundreds of hours in going through the bureaucratic process to get the APA to approve uh, our three workshops for continuing education for psychologists. 
Oh, I can imagine it was a lot of red tape you guys had to had to kind of cut around, or even even having to deal with. Anyone uh, who's gotten his or her program approved by the APA for uh, CE credits knows the hoops that uh, Dr. Armour and I had to jump through. I can Im I can imagine it was probably a um, it was a nice long battle, but a battle that's totally worth it. Well, I believe it builds an important bridge between psychology and hypnotherapy and sets a precedent uh, for uh, hypnotherapists in other countries around the globe. Yeah, it seems like, um, I mean, I could be wrong. This could be a bias because, you know, obviously America is the best country in the world. Kidding everybody. I'm joking with everybody. The, uh, but I think we have a lot of, I could be wrong, but we have a lot of, uh, how do I, call, I don't want to call it breakthroughs, but we have a lot of advancements happening in the U.S. I'm not sure about other countries. I'm sure a lot of countries have, have the unique uh, advantages coming through. It's a global community. Uh, in fact, sometimes people ask me uh, where the best training is in hypnotherapy. And I have to tell you, in my opinion, Australia is years ahead of us because the Australian Hypnotherapist Association, uh, not only is it the oldest hypnosis association in the world, believe it or not, older than the NGH, uh, they also have uh, a very comprehensive training program in order to be certified by that organization. I know, uh, sorry for interrupting, I know <laughs> at one point, was it, I think it was New South Wales, which was, you could not practice hypnotherapy. I think they might have changed it. I could be wrong, though. Uh, they had some problems there uh, a number of years ago, and uh, there were several key people in the hypnotherapy profession that uh, were able to uh, grow beyond that and get hypnotherapy more acceptable. Oh, okay, okay. So, th so that was taken care of. That's good. Yes. Uh, I believe Joanne Goulding will be at the Hypnothots Live. I know she's been very active in hypnotherapy in Australia for many years. She fought legal battles herself, and uh, she's the originator of the Sleep Talk, which is uh, becoming famous all over the globe now. That's how I know her name. And uh, she's a very genuine person, uh, totally professional, uh, client-centered, and if you get a chance to visit with her, she's well worth talking to. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to take a look at it. Now, Often find her hovering around uh, uh, the exhibit uh, table where Larry and Cheryl Elman work because they're good friends. Oh, that that is awesome. Yeah, I can't. You know, I cannot wait to finally catch up with everybody. It's been. You know, I was, telling, I was joking with somebody that uh, I'm like, somebody needs to invent a time machine so I can just be like, hypno thoughts skip. Uh, skip the the boring parts of uh, of uh, the year, like skip work, do my birthday, Christmas, and then hypno thoughts. But I'm pretty sure nobody's invented a time machine yet. Nope. The closest thing I know to a time machine is your imagination, where you can go <laughs> back in time in regression therapy. Exactly. Uh, and for those who are curious, uh, time permitting, we will devote a little bit of time to past life regressions factor fantasy in the two-day regression workshop. There are several different explanations to satisfy uh, the skeptics, uh, but oftentimes when a person initiates a regression, even if neither the client nor the hypnotherapist believes in past lives, sometimes a client will trance out into a spontaneous real or imagined past life. Is it a real past life? Is it fantasy or metaphor or false memory? Uh, is it channeling uh, from the universal uh, consciousness, kind of like a spiritual internet? You guess is as good as mine. But if it helps a client, it doesn't matter, does it? That's what I've uh, I've, I've never done. I've never done. Well, I haven't done much regression. Um, especially, I haven't done any past life regression. But my opinion is, if it helps somebody, that it it's well worth it. As long as you're not trying to mis uh, misrepresent anything, in my opinion. I agree. And if a client has a spontaneous past life regression and, uh, and then asks me after the session if I think it's real, as happened years ago with a devout uh, Lutheran Sunday school teacher, 
uh, I put the ball back in their tennis court. I said, well, there were several explanations to explain what may have happened. Uh, it could be fantasy or metaphor. Maybe you saw a movie or heard a story as a child and your subconscious soaked it up. Some people believe it takes more than one lifetime to grow spiritually enough to uh, go to heaven. Other people believe we can channel the memories from the other side. Uh, and you're free to draw your own conclusions. But what's important is your subconscious found a way to uh, help you release the fear of flying. In her alleged past life regression, she suffocated to death in an airtight compartment. And uh, that's what the cause of her fear of flying was, the fear of suffocating once the plane got above 5,000 feet and the cabin was pressurized and airtight. Now, here, I'm trying to think of a good way, um, almost a way to incentivize to incentivize people for go, to go to the conference. Is there any um, anything you could do over maybe the next five or ten minutes? How do I describe it? anything you could do? Maybe like a little bonus you could come up with. Uh, how would I say it? Is there anything you could do maybe for this video where you could incentivize it for the next five ten minutes? Talk about maybe a particular technique you use, and then what I'll if people register register for your class, I'll give them a free download of this video. Oh, <laughs> well. Uh I help clients establish finger response uh, questions, which uh, is called idiomotor responding. Some people call it IMR for idiomotor responding. <laughs> and sometimes it's not obvious whether to use parts therapy or regression therapy. Uh, there is a technique where I set up a series of questions. And the reason I say a series of questions is because um, it's based on the fact there are seven basic categories of causes of problems and sometimes certain causes categories of causes would lend themselves more to regression while others might lend themselves more to parts therapy or one of its variations uh, i would be happy to offer a free script to anyone who wants to email me at my uh, email address, Roy at RoyHunter.com, R-O-Y at R-O-Y-H-U-N-T-E-R.com. And if they mention this podcast, uh, I'll give them the questions to ask as well as how to uh, measure the responses. Now, at this point, I want to mention that some people uh, recently uh, threw up a thread on uh, the hypnothoughts.com accusing me of doing inappropriate leading because of the idiomotor response questions but these are generic questions and you set the plate with seven responses granted they're yes or no but they're most likely to come out of the subconscious when it's finger response as opposed to a verbal response uh, the idea originated from uh, david cheek and uh, leslie lacrone decades ago they called it the seven keys. Charles Tebbets adapted uh, the same formula, changed a couple of the names of the psychodynamics, even though they were basically in the same categories. He called it the seven psychodynamics of a symptom. I updated Charlie's work, changed a couple of the names. For example, uh, what Lacrone and Cheek called organ language, Charlie called body language. And to me, that was confusing, so I changed it to current unresolved issue. Charlie's definition was based on the fact that your subconscious could cause your body to have a problem if you're doing something that the subconscious wanted changing. Now, uh, a current unresolved issue could be a habit rather than something physically wrong with your body, so that's why I changed it to current unresolved issue. And... It's the same formula that appears in the Art of Hypnotherapy, uh, the Parts Therapy text, and the Art of Hypnotic Regression Therapy. Meanwhile, Bruce Eimer, who was familiar with uh, the seven keys of Cheek and Lacrone because he was a personal friend of David Cheek, uh, he co-authored a book on idiomotor response signals with Dr. Dabney Ewan a few years back. So you had the Cheek and Lacrone version first, and then on one side, Tebbit's version. On the other side, 
uh, the version in the psychology profession. And now in the latest update of the parts therapy workbook and the hypnotic regression therapy workbook, uh, Bruce Eimer has modified both his version and my version into uh, a new version with the acronym SUCCESS. And SUCCESS spells out the current version of those same seven psychodynamics to make it easy to remember. So now the grandchild of what the crone and cheek came up with decades ago uh, is a combined version from both branches, which I think is uh, kind of neat. Okay, it's, it's funny. I'm sitting here. I'm trying to spell success. I was like, I'm like, okay, so how many letters is that? That's very interesting. Seven letters. You know, you um, uh, I don't want to get too far off topic, but you mentioned Lacrone. He um, I I think I have his book on my shelf. He wrote it was a self hypnosis book, I believe. He did write a self hypnosis book. When I studied hypnosis under Charles Tebbets in 1983. Uh, there was an old book by Lacrone and Bordeaux written in the 40s called Hypnotism Today. Well, now that would be Hypnotism Yesterday. Uh, but that was one of our two textbooks, and the other textbook was Hypnotherapy by uh, the late Dave Elman. So those were our two textbooks. It's funny, as I do have, um, I have one of his books. <laughs> so I know uh, about a year ago. Um, Say half a year ago, I started studying a lot more marketing, you know, copy, you know, copywriting and whatnot. And I found an old, an old print ad or a sales letter by uh, Eugene Schwartz, and it, he was doing the, uh, I think the original mail order ad for Leslie uh, Lacron's book. So I, oh, really? oh, yeah, yeah, I took, and I wanted to get good at uh, uh, marketing and copywriting. So one of the good, uh, the old techniques is to take. Um, uh, a sales letter that's been proven to work really good and take and just rewrite it by hand to kind of model internalize the uh, writing style. Mm -hmm. After after I did that, I looked at my shelf and I was like, oh, no way, that's the book right there. I didn't even realize I had the book. It was kind of interesting. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, I remember when I was in uh, classes at Charlie's, uh, how many people said that his self-hypnosis book, which was called Self-Hypnosis and Other Mind Expanding Techniques, was considered the best self-hypnosis book on the market uh, 32 years ago uh, because mm -hmm. of its easy, simple language. And um, I took a lot of what I learned from him, combined it with some of my sales background, as well as my hypnotherapy training. And uh, my latest version of self-hypnosis is mastering the power of self-hypnosis and the second edition was published by crown house publishing in 2011 i've gotten a lot of really great reviews from that book there's also a cd included uh by the publisher uh, next to the back cover uh with two different hypnosis messages one is on stress management the other is an old 10 minute meditation i recorded in 1990 that uh, resulted in my being awarded the Hypnotic Voice of the Year from the International Hypnosis Hall of Fame. You know what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to incentivize people to go to your um, to your conference. There's a uh, used bookstore here that they pretty much know any hypnosis book. It's my book. They because I'm the only one that goes there. So they and it's a smile and they always set them aside. Somebody actually delivered a huge quantity of his. Of Tebbit's uh, purple book, if I can get those for fairly cheap enough, as long as they're not going to try to bleed me dry on them, because I know nobody else will buy them, I'm going to go to the bookstore. Try to all uh, the next couple of days, if I can get those for a, a good amount, what I'll do. Anybody that registers for his class, I'll give them a free copy. If I can, hopefully, I can get those books. Anyone who registers for either one of my classes, yeah. as a result of this video, I will also give them one free DVD. Awesome. Yeah, that's a, it's an excellent book. I know, but the thing is, I just looked at my bookshelf and I've got, I'm like looking around, like, okay, this book, I've got so many books. And then this is the one we were just mentioned, uh, the Lacrone book that I, um, that's an oldie goldie. Oh yeah. I found the thing is it, it, it says two forty five, but, um, I think I probably got it for $8, which is not bad. It's funny, I'll, I probably can't read it, but the writing on the back, 
That's the same writing that was from the uh, the newspaper ad wrote in the, I'd say that maybe the 50s. Oh. We, you know what's funny? I believe the guy that did the copywriting work, the marketing for this guy, I believe it was, I think it was free works. I'm pretty sure Leslie LeCron taught him self-hypnosis or helped him in, I could be wrong, but I believe he helped him in some kind of manner, so he ended up, I could be wrong, but I think he might have done some free marketing for the guy. I'm not real familiar with the history of Leslie LeCron, even though one of my books was on uh, 20th century history of the artists of uh, hypnosis. The book is entitled Through the Looking Glass. Uh, there's a link on my website to the uh, uh, Alliance bookstore uh, with the IMDHA where you can buy a copy. Uh, the only copies I sell off my website are autographed copies of Sweet. that particular book. Boy, this has been uh, great talking to you and everybody. Look above this video. There will be a link for his uh, his workshops. Definitely register for one. If if not both, register for one of them. And I, I cannot wait to catch up with everybody. I'm looking forward to Hypnothoughts Live. Oh, also, you might want to edit out the silence when you left because I assume you're going to have a recording of this. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm going to. Yeah, it's a nice little chunk of silence. Uh, I had a little blurb referring people to my website, uh, but other than that, I was silent pretty much the whole time you were gone. Uh, you could you could have made faces. You could have done some jokes <laughs> on karaoke. I suppose I could have put on my uh, weird sense of humor that occasionally emerges from a part of me that I usually keep in check. <laughs> Don't worry, you you can let that part uh, that part go in uh, Vegas. <laughs> I did with the recent jokes that someone asked for on Hypnothoughts. What I'll do is I'll hit stop broadcast because I don't hope it should be PC, but I always want to keep right. everything squeaky clean just in case. Edit out anything that you deem might be questionable. But I would like to mention uh, for anyone who's watching who's either a uh, hypnosis professional or a prospective client interested in hypnosis that my website is geared both for the professionals as well as people who might be interested in becoming clients of hypnosis. I have a lot of information on there for uh, people who are new to the profession, for people who are simply interested in having hypnotherapy uh, as a client, uh, as well as people who are hypnosis professionals who wish to learn more. Definitely, and that's RoyHunter.com, right? Correct. Well, it's been great catching up with you. And like I said, I'm going to, if I hang up, I'm going to call the bookstore and hopefully, so last time I checked, they had a huge stack of Tebbit's books. If I can get those for like two bucks a pop or something, I'll um, bring them in. Anybody that signs up, I will give them a free copy. And folks, uh, for, getting, for registering, uh, like you said, you're going to get a free copy of the, uh, the Idiomotor script and a DVD. Yes. I need to know before the uh, actual workshop that you registered as a result of this podcast so I can set the DVD aside because quite frequently I sell out of my uh, products uh, when I have an exhibit table. Yeah, so everybody, once you register, contact him. And it's Roy at RoyHunter.com, right? Correct. What? I cannot wait to catch up with you and everybody else and to hear some of your weird sense of humor. So just set aside a nice joke for me. Okay, will do. So everybody, I will see everybody soon. And like I said, make sure to click that link up there and register for uh, one or for both or one of his classes. Aloha. It was nice seeing you. Practice long and prosper. Oh, here I got up. There it goes. <laughs>